Praise be to Jesus. Hello again, everyone. Charles with you here. Uh, well, as you can see by the plate up on the computer, um, the two stories I'm going to read to you um, are just, uh, they really show you what's, um, what's really, really wrong with the Catholic Church and what's going on here. So the first story um, was just posted by the Associated Press, so uh, this is fairly short. I'm going to read this to you. Pope Francis has defrocked the Chilean priest at the uh, center of the global sex abuse scandal rocking his papacy, invoking supreme authority to stiffen a sentence originally handed down by the Vatican in 2011. In a statement Friday, the Vatican said Francis had laicized the 88-year-old Reverend Fernando uh, Caradima, who was originally sanctioned to a lifetime of penance and prayer for having sexually abused minors. The penance and prayer sanction has been the Vatican's punishment of choice for elderly priests convicted of raping and molesting children. It has long been criticized by victims as too soft and essentially an all-expense-paid retirement. The Vatican didn't say what new evidence, if any, prompted Francis to reevaluate Cardema's original sanction and impose what clergy consider the equivalent of a death sentence. Well, the way this struck me was that, um, you know, it's sort of like throwing a bone to a dog, you know, when he's barking, um, you know, it's something that, you know, saying here, gnaw on this here and keep your mouth shut. Uh, so, um, you know, you have that story there. Now, then I remembered that just yesterday, I started reading something and then I got distracted, I think. Um, but I did find it again, and, you know, uh, this shows you, this, this is a, a, you know, just a, such a sad and terrible story. I'm going to read a, quite a bit of this to you. I am a priest of eight years in good standing with the Archdiocese of Denver. About three weeks before the McCarrick scandal broke, I relayed reports of misconduct with children to Archbishop Aquila, and since then, I have been homeless and ignored by his chancery. After months of reaching out to them, I am now forced to go public with these scandals. After seeking legal counsel, I wrote an email to Archbishop Aquila, dated the 24th of May, 2018, that I had heard third hand that a high-powered priest in the 1980s used to share a bed with a boy. That boy is now an adult, and he is a friend of a very good friend. That priest is now an extremely important person in the Archdiocese of Denver. I fear that if one boy was involved with slumber parties with this man, then many others may have had some slumber parties too. I tried to get the victim to talk to me, but he would not. Should the Archbishop retaliate with lies about me for this blog post, I will consider bringing this name to Denver 9 News. In that same email dated the 24th of May 2018 to Archbishop Aquila, I expressed concern that about five years ago, a seminarian webcammed or spy cammed two 12-year-old boys in their shower at a private residence. Although the seminary reported this to police and although the seminarian fled the country, the seminary never apologized officially, except for one holy priest at the seminary who did so on his own. I express my concern at the lack of transparency from the seminary to the family that I know so well. On the 26th of May, 2018, the threats from the chancery began. 
Archbishop Aquila, wrote me on the 26th of May. To be direct, the way you have expressed yourself raises serious civil and canonical implications. Father Capucci, the judicial victor, uh, vicar, wrote me, Please identify your civil lawyer so the Archdiocese's longtime counsel, such and such people, can be in touch with these lawyers first thing tomorrow. These threats did not stop me. Yeah, I uh, lost my place here. Um, these reports did not stop me from reporting what I had heard. I brought the above potential cases of misconduct with children to the Denver District Attorney. I met with Beth McCann on the 31st of May 2018 at 10 a.m. Since reporting scandals, Archbishop Aquila has iced me and I have been homeless and living out of my car. Here is what my dresser now looks like. And, um, you know, on, on his blog site, he has a picture of this. Well, it's a cardboard box in his car is what it is. Archbishop Aquila recently created a solemn promise website where he said, I take very seriously all reported incidents of misconduct by members of the clergy or other church workers, and we will investigate even non-criminal misconduct with great diligence. Archbishop Aquila also promises us priests, the statement is on the priest blog site, that he would ensure your physical, spiritual, and psychological well-being. Here is me sleeping in my car after my having relayed reports of a priest and a seminarian having a past of potential misconduct with children. And, you know, they, you know he has a, a picture of himself sleeping in, the, sleeping in his car. Well, actually, he has a picture of him laying down in the car. The picture of a, is of his feet. I am being treated as a criminal priest um, when there are still criminal priests active in Denver. Denver is the city where I was baptized, confirmed, worked for the city paramara, uh, paramedic division, and was finally ordained by Archbishop Chaput uh, to the holy priesthood of Jesus Christ. I thought of giving up, but I decided I need to fight uh, for this, since it is not my priesthood, but Christ's. Aware that lying will land me in hell, I sign off with these words from the book of the Apocalypse. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, they shall have their portion in the pool burning with fire and brimstone which is the second death, Apocalypse 21.8. In Christ, Father David Nix, Roman Catholic priest of the Archdiocese of Denver. So, in, in the first story, we see what I consider to be a, a, the Pope throwing a, a bone to uh, his critics, and of course, those of you who follow uh, the news on this channel have seen, uh, I think there were a series of three homilies where he equates uh, those of us who uh, show a concern for the way he is handling all this. Um, he, what, he, what, he, what he does is, uh, you know, he, he's uh, equating us to doing Satan's work is what he's doing. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty clear. Um, so, um, you know, e even those who support the Pope don't like the way he's handling and handling this. So he's really got his back up against the wall. So, you know, I mean, to to what to, to what the uh, the first story was about um, about um, laicizing uh, a priest um, that had sanctions brought against him in 2011 and now he's going to strengthen that 
I mean, that's not dealing with the reality of what's going on today. I mean, that's why I, I said it's like um, throwing a bone to a barking dog. I mean, we're the barking dogs, and he just wants us to shut up, basically. You know, so that that that's the way the church is dealing with it. I mean, he's dealing, the Pope is dealing with it in that way. Um, the cardinals and bishops are just avoiding it and, um, you know, putting the emphasis like Cardinal Kupich, you know, he has more, in, he has a bigger agenda or, you know, they just avoid talking about it at all and we need to do, um, pray and do penance for uh, these poor, uh, poor souls who have been abused. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, but what these poor souls need, these victims need, is justice. And, um, you know, hopefully Jesus will bring it about. Now, here's a, now the second story. Now, here we have a priest who actually does something. I mean, even though he, he gets information third hand, he got this third hand. How many priests are going to go to their bishop with third hand information? But this priest did. And God bless him for that. All right, and look at and look at how he's being treated. He's living out of his car. All right, look at what this bishop said in a statement. You know, you use the link and go. You uh, click on the link uh, in the description box. Go and look at what this bishop told his priests about how things were going to be handled. All right, that's what came out of this bishop's mouth. Now. Look at what this bishop is doing, all right? I read enough of the article to you. I mean, there's a lot more to it, um, but it doesn't change anything. I didn't, I didn't read to you um, anything that's going to give you the wrong idea or a twisted view of what's going on here. Um, I, I just, you know, for me to read a, a very lengthy article... Um, I don't think you need to hear all that. You can always go to the description box and go and read the complete article. All right. I, I try to be fair, um, um, you know, in terms of what I present to you. So, but I mean, look, look at, you know, I don't want to end on that note talking about myself. You know, I, I really like you to really think about, um, you know, the contrast between, um, what's being said in the first article and then what this priest is saying is going on. And I, I think this is a really good example of something you can use to teach other people who are just, they just don't get it, all right? Um, you know, but th this, this um, pretty much shows you um, and maybe will help them get it. You know, I mean, uh, God will reward you for trying. All right, well, that's all I'm going to say about this here. So um, that's it for now. Uh, enjoy your day or evening, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.